Would you pick Ryan Rickleton in your squad and in your team? That was a question that was asked to us on Instagram. And today is our fan questions. This is where you guys get to ask us questions. And we will try and answer them as best as possible and get to as many as possible in the lot of time. Now, this question is very specific because they did mention specifically test and ODI cricket. But we thought that it would be an interesting topic to go with for today's live show. So this is what this show is about. You know what you have to do. You get involved in the live comments section, and then that's how you know that we're going to answer your questions. But if you really, really want us to answer your questions and 100% make sure of it, then you know what you have to do. You need to get involved in the Super Chat. And that's how you know for sure that we will answer it. So please help and support us by getting involved with the Super Chat. Other than that, guys, let's get straight into today's show. I'm really excited about it. But before we get going, subscribe to this channel. Click that notification bell for all future videos. But also get involved with the, the magazine as well. Subscribe to Cricket Fanatics Magazine Monthly. The link is in the description. So go ahead and do so straight away. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We will get straight into this show. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your daily show. I'm your host, Harley Maiden, and this is my co-host, Aditya. And today we answer your questions. So this is what the show is about. You know that every Friday we try to do so. We will update you on a, a couple of things as well. As you know, that bad light stopped playing in the second official test between South Africa and India. Eh? So it's basically unofficially, uh, well, a draw. So <laughs> what happens now is that it's gunning for the victory in that final match is going to be a proper proper clash at the end of the day well we're hoping that we'll see that that it will be as competitive as this one and that there are no other interruptions involved in this particular um, series but this show is all about me asking you guys asking us questions so let me start first and foremost with the questions that you guys sent in on instagram and i think that's the first place that we start with um First and foremost, we've got one from Kustab who says, thoughts on today's Kohli dismissal against New Zealand. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to start with that, Aditya, because I wasn't watching the game. So I think you need to answer this one. It, it's a good question. And um, it's been raging all over social media as well as the cricket community. My, my, my answer to that is that... Um, the process that was followed was as per ICC rules, and that was accurate. But I think the outcome was wrong. Um, to my mind, I think it was not out because there was no evidence either way that um, the bat touched the ball first or the bat touched the ball first. There's no conclusive evidence either way. So I think the benefit of doubt should have gone to the better. But uh, yeah, I guess that's just my view. I don't think it was out. Excellent. So let's move on to the next one. We've got JLJ Jerome. Is Cameron Dalport the most underrated T20 player in South Africa? Um, personally, I don't... I'm not saying that I... Don't see the value in Cameron Dalpo. Don't get me wrong over here. I 100% I do understand that he's a great T20 player, that he's a good T20 player. But I'm not necessarily one of those guys that are going to sit here and say that Cameron Dalpo is one of the best T20 players in South Africa. Um, I've seen him play in the Mzanzi Super League a couple of times. In a couple of matches, he did do well, but not consistently enough for me to say, wow, he's like world class. That, Every single team that South Africa put out should have Cameron Dalport's name in it. Um, I don't personally put him in the same bracket as the Avery Valises, Faf to Precis, KG Rabadas, Anik Nokias, um, Imran Tahirs, all of them. I don't put him in the same bracket as all of them. 
I would, as far as goers, I wouldn't put him in the same bracket as the Bray Shamsi either, because in the local competitions that and CPL we gave, we plays, the Bray Shamsi is excellent. Now, Cameron is a good player, and I do and I do get people that that love him, but I I wouldn't say that he's the most underrated T20 player in South Africa. To to be honest, I think that there are others that we can maybe say are underrated. I think that someone like um let me just get this right now and i must remember all those names um they i feel that they someone like vian Lubber is underrated in 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 t20 cricket um in domestic cricket at least uh, i think he was really good in the in in the zanzi super league and he he was i feel that he should have gotten a little bit more plaudits for the way he performed um I think Temba Bavuma is actually an underrated T20 player as well. A lot of players don't actually think that he's a good T20 player, but when it comes to domestic T20 cricket, he dominates. Um, but then again, he's not in that same world class bracket as I, as I mentioned earlier. So when you're talking about Cameron Dalput being underrated, I wonder, I try to understand that question a little better because I would like to know where you put him and you rank him. So please, if you are watching the show, let me know where you rank him um in the world what is your thoughts on on Cameron Dalport I think I think he's been he's been good but again I think when you know when you focus that much on white ball cricket you know at, at a certain point you you do get found out right because like I've been saying consistently the more red ball cricket you play the better white Ball play become, and um, I don't know if that's been the case with with Cameron Delport. And um, he hasn't. He, I don't think he's ever played the IPL. Um, so uh, I have. We haven't seen him on that stage. He does play the PSL and the MSL and uh, a lot of the other leagues around the world. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't call him an underrated, the most underrated player in South Africa. Uh, because that adaptability is not there, right, to all the different conditions around the world. Um, in fact, you, like you mentioned, David Avilias, Faf Du Plessis, etc. So right now, the T10 tournament is going on in uh, in Abu Dhabi, and Faf Du Plessis, he didn't perform in in three games. He's playing the format for the first time. I think it's the fourth game. He scored he scored some 22 of eight balls or something like that. Not out. No, that's that's crazy. We've never seen Faf Du Plessis strike at 300, you know, so that's insane. Uh, but yeah, I think so. That's the adaptability part that I don't mm. think Cameron Delport has been able to uh, display just yet. Yeah, oh, Riley Rousseau is another one. I see someone mentioned him in the comment section. I mean, this yeah. T20 domestic competition proved that he's quite underrated um, in the T20 arena. I think Riley is one of those those names that we can mention. Um, Colin too. Let's move. Colin Ingram as well. Colin Ingram, uh, yeah. Colin Ingram as well. Um, let's move on. Let's go to um, Damon. Damon Archery. I think that's what his name is on on, on Instagram. Can Clinton Steerman be the next version of uh, the, the next Vernon Philander with bat and ball? Now, to me personally, I think Clinton has to improve his batting a hell of a lot if he wants to compete with Vernon Philander with a bat. Um, with the ball, though, I can see it. Uh, I've seen Vernon play some excellent cricket that, that really makes you feel like, wow, you know, that's a Vern-type delivery. And a lot of people were putting him in that bracket as a Vern-type bowler because as he loses his pace, he might have to become that type of player. Um, he is quite accurate. He does swing the ball um, early on. He does move the ball. He does force you to play deliver at deliveries that you shouldn't. And he's been proving that in the SAA tour. Um, I think that the SAA games, he's shown that um, he has that ability in him. So I do think that he's on track to become a similar player to, to Vernon Philander with the ball. But I'm not so sure with the bat, guys. I, I wouldn't put him in the same bracket as Vernon with the bat because Vernon has scored some proper runs with the bat already for South Africa in, 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 in more than one format. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on to the next question, which is do I either or both of you 
track associate cricket. Uh, I don't as much, Aditya. Are, are you someone that does? Not actively, unfortunately, but uh, I do follow scores as in as in when possible. But look, I'm, I'm a huge supporter of um, of associate cricket and um, I do make it a point to to follow as much as possible. But um, it's very difficult to watch here in, in India because a lot of it is is not available on TV or on streaming platforms. And uh, I think generally india plays so much cricket throughout the year it's difficult to follow everything that's going on so especially me because south cricket fanatics is primarily a south african cricket fan channel um it makes it very difficult for me to follow everything it, I, I can only really focus there's enough cricket for me to focus on south africa alone and the problems that we have here too <clears throat> but abai that's what we have you for you know you normally do the things that we don't normally do so you are eyes and ears all around the world um a player to watch. This is from Shekhar, 10.25 or 102.5. Um, player to watch out for in SA versus India series. Um, I'm going to pick... I'm going to pick... It depends who's in the squad as well because we don't know who the full squad is going to be. But I'm going to say Aiden Markram as the player to watch. I think he's going to be a key figure for South Africa in this particular series. I think his form that is coming in across formats is, has been good. Um, he's, I hope he brings his T20 form into the test arena. Uh, not, maybe not the same approach, but the, the, the same um, momentum or confidence into the, into the arena. When it comes to India, everyone... <laughs> I think South Africa does have to, to to be careful that they don't um that they keep their that they play their best game against India because India is not a team that you can take lightly um and you need to get everything right on the day. I mean the usuals like Virat Kohli and Bumrah and all of those guys of course you're going to be a little bit uh, wary of them and what they can produce um but ultimately others think that we need to just to watch India from that perspective. Is there someone that stands out to you from your perspective, um, Aditya, uh, from an India perspective? You obviously have been watching the series quite closely with, with India, so you would have seen some guys that maybe won't be part. Maybe there are some guys that maybe are in this series that might not be in, in South Africa. Um, look, I think there are plenty from batting perspective. Rohit Sharma is coming off... Um, a wonderful series against England. So, uh, you know, I think he'd be determined to do well against South Africa. Uh, if Shubman Gill is selected, I think, you know, he can uh, he can put in a few performances. He's looking in good touch right now. Uh, Virat Kohli will be determined to do well in South Africa. He has a very good record in South Africa. You know, he's he scored a couple of centuries and uh, I think he, he likes playing in South Africa. Uh, so that's great. I think it'd be a challenge for challenge for Rishab Pant when he comes back into the team as a wicketkeeper batsman because you know there's there's a sense of flamboyance to him and uh, I don't know if uh, the spice of a South African wicket will let him score those easy runs. Bowling point of view, Bumrah. I thought he had a fantastic first tour of South Africa. It's great. Uh, Mohammad Siraj will be key factor. South Africa because you know he's got malleable wrists you know and uh, he's a great uh, exponent of swing so yeah, I guess there are plenty and I think even outside the level right guys like Kiel Rahul for example I don't know if might be selected or not but you know he could he has the technique to do well anywhere mm. I'm particularly um, scared of a guy like Pumara and why I mentioned him is because the weakest in South Africa will suit these type of bowling yeah. Um, especially the Wanderers and Centurion, um, those two. Oh, Newlands, we know, Newlands, we're uncertain of. Like, I, I feel that the wicket is not the same like it used to be. Um, we saw that in some of the games that were played at Newlands recently. So we don't know what wicket's going to come. They don't have a, like, a designated, like a, a full-time groundsman over there. So we don't know what wickets they're going to prepare. It might be completely different to what we saw during the domestic cricket. So we're going to have to wait and see until... Um, in that first game, uh, when 
at that or not the first game but the, one of the, the the second game that they play which is at newlands okay let's move on um i think it's time for us to go to okay wait there is one over here because of the quotas um because of quota are we missing lots of talent players and what can we do about that so i've got i put up a poll this or not a poll but an image this morning uh, on our facebook page i did do it on twitter but i took it down because i don't think that twitter is the right platform for something like that um i feel there's not enough characters for you to explain your reasons against or for the quota system um i will tell you my opinion on it first and foremost but let me just read some of the, the comments that were left on this particular image on facebook so someone's um van said i don't know how to pronounce his surname but van said yes yes because it's blocking the talent that deserves to play at the at that position and then there were there were some um comments underneath that saying what talent that is being blocked please um then Werner gave a nice long um, paragraph he said i would i would say yes at national level you want to your very best team to play regardless of color the best players will rise to the top and not feel like they are unjustly being labeled if you lose then people won't be able to blame quotas but rather poor team performances as it should be the injustice of the past warrants transformation being implemented up until provincial level at the point you need to be the best in your role to make the national team i hope in time we will get a lot of new talent coming through that will represent all cultures in sa equally i look at Antile Semanani and deval previous combining in the under 19 squad and i see what future could look like then someone said teams we play at international level only pick their best available players why should we um that's just i don't agree with that statement because you can't, <laughs> you can't compare south africa to other countries because other countries didn't have apartheid for example but then uh, there was another one that a person said um poor um what Lokwa said this is not um poor that comes on our show guys um quotas or no quotas majority white south africans need to change their attitude they behave as if only whites are talented enough to play the sport we have a coach who has hired without following proper procedures, but no noise was made. The same coach and his buddies racially abused their teammates and nothing was done. Quotas are not ideal, but necessary in SA. Unfair labeling of players of color will continue. If Prince, Makaya, Adams and Lungi can be mistreated and labeled, then it should be clear that quotas is just an excuse. Um, then we i think that's about all the others are just going crazy at each other and fighting with each other but those are some of the main headlines i'll give you my opinion um when it comes to the quota system i understand why it was initially put in place uh, i feel that south africa needed to rewrite the wrongs of the past to an extent and give black talent hope you know if you don't if a, if a young black boy or a young colored boy is watching cricket on tv and he this sees a completely white team he's not going to believe that he can be there and that he can play that sport because there's nobody for him to associate himself to or to, to look up to from that perspective because they don't come from the same backgrounds and it's clear that white people had an advantage when it comes to um privilege when it comes to wealth when it comes to housing when it comes to match situations with regards to i mean not match situation sorry i'm um, locations when it comes to schooling when it comes to university when it comes to everything they have a massive advantage so for a young black african kid to look up to a white player is not very often going to happen if they don't associate find something that is similar in in their upbringing it's similar because we as people we attach ourselves or associate ourselves with people that have gone through a similar struggle than we have normally when it comes to artists when it comes to mu music things that are on a deeper level you normally would want to do so um so the thing is we with a quota system i do believe that 
we are producing enough right now to not have such a strict quota system at international level. I think it should be maybe watered down or reduced a little bit. And the but but I feel that then in that we need to find a way to produce more players of color so that we have a bigger pool to pick from. Because at the moment we are not producing enough players of color so that we have a massive pool to pick from. You know, it's it's at the moment we are we only have a certain limited amount of players that we can pick from when it comes to players of color. So domestic system, school system, universities, all of those things and grassroots level need to be in place so that we can completely um, increase the opportunities of more players of color, not forcing them into the side, but allowing them opportunities so that they can show what their talent is about. Players of color were very badly treated in this country for many, many years and weren't given opportunities at all, no matter how good they were. So it's about time now that those players get opportunities at domestic and club level. So we will need to we will need to improve that as we go along. So yeah, um, I, currently I don't see a lot in starting 11s. I don't see a lot of players that that you can justly call quote the players that start for the pro tiers on a regular basis. Um, that's my honestly what I what I think. Um, I. I don't think that South Africa currently have that in their setup where you can categorically say they are a quota player if they, if we South Africa picks their best 11. Um, so currently that is the case and that's how I feel about it. Um, and I think there needs to be a better balance um, that allows us to be able to pick more players on merit. Um, the, the problem is, is how we're going to close that gap between white players that are privileged and poorer players that are that happen to be players of color because this country is still divided when it comes to players people of color black africans large numbers of them are and and, and players are, and colored players and colored people are largely uneducated and largely are living below the 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 minimum wage line so it's very difficult um, for for people of color to actually make it in this country in sport, unless they're playing rugby at the moment, I feel because rugby, when you're a kid, you, all you need is a ball and you can run around bare feet. And you, I mean, you you play bare feet. You don't even need boots right up until I think grade six, grade seven in in, in junior school. So at the moment, we need to provide more opportunities for people of color in South Africa and in the sport. Um, and particularly when it comes to black African batters and colored batters, because I feel that for a long time, only a certain type of black player or colored player with a certain type of mentality would make it, you know? Um, so from that perspective, um, I know someone said, do you, do you think Andile is not a quota player? I don't think that Andile is a quota player. And to be honest over here, I think that Antilia has not necessarily been treated very well in the international setup recent, in recent times. I think that Antilia also does, didn't make the side. So for you to, to call him a quota player when he isn't even in the team, I mean, we take, you, he hasn't really gotten starts um, in, in matches. So I don't tend to use quota player as a, as a way to... Um, as a way to describe players. I'm not the type of person that will use that because it has a negative connotation to it. I don't like that term, quota. It shouldn't, I shouldn't, they shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have put a name, so a negative name or connotation to the word quota for quota players. It's, it's, I don't feel that that's how it should be. But ultimately, I've given my opinions on, on what I feel about the quota system. I think that I understand why it was put in place initially because of this, the past in, in, in South Africa and what South Africans, people of color have gone through. Remember that only people of color have gone, gone through that injustice, not white people. So you are talking about white people that have a massive advantage. And it's, it's literally like running a 100 meter race and starting by the 600 meter mark or 800 meter mark. You're asking, that's, that's, that's literally what you're asking a, a black player or color player to do in this country. Because it's uh, the opportunities are so 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 low, because it's easier for a white player to make it in this country in cricket because cricket is an elitist sport. We know that, and the elite in this country are still majority white. 
So unfortunately, that is the case. But ultimately, Aditya, do you want to have your say on this or do you feel that I've said everything that needs to be said? Uh, you've, you've said everything that that needs to be said. Uh, in the comment section, uh, PSV said that India didn't have apartheid, but they had the caste system. See, a qu India has also had its version of a quota system. It doesn't necessarily have to be your own identity. In India, we had the zonal system, or you know, the state system where players, where the team is selected based on the state that you're from. How many players have we seen from like Arunachal Pradesh, for example, or from, from Assam? We haven't. You know, it's generally been dominated by, by Mumbai or Delhi or UP or Chennai, you know? So India has had its own quota systems for a period of time. It's it is it is absolutely and factually inaccurate to say that India has never had a quota system. So, just clearing that for the record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's move on from that. Uh, we will have a. We will obviously do a show to explain everything and down the line when I get some proper experts on the show that that know everything about it because I'm just a fan as well, trying to figure out all of this as well. Let's move on to the main headline of this particular show. Would you pick Ryan Rickleton in your team? Yes. <laughs> So I've been calling for Ryan Rickleton to be involved in particularly white ball cricket for a long time. I think he's, it's been, he's been a little bit unfairly treated with regards to getting opportunities. He's, he was, unfortunately, he was, in, an, he was in, an, in a couple of tours that were cancelled and didn't get an opportunity to actually play, which is unfortunate. And now again, the Netherlands, we were hoping to see him there and he didn't get an opportunity. But I think that at least for SAA, he should have gotten an opportunity. I think that he should be in line as the next either opener in four-day cricket if he's not going to take the gloves or as the next keeper behind Carl Verena currently because I think Carl, Carl is exceptional in that position. So it's one of those things that I, that I think is tricky because I think that Ryan would see white ball cricket a lot quicker. He has a big opportunity to make it in the ODI format than I feel in, in the tested in the country. If, if the, Dean Alga doesn't perform and starts falling off form, I think he's the only person that really can, Ryan can replace with regards to that. Um, and we'll, we'll have to look at it from that perspective as well. But in the white ball arena, I think he has, he should be able to be in line. Um, to to play you know um i think particularly in white ball cricket he has an opportunity to put his hand i think everybody should be able to go have a basically a trial a couple of games to to prove what they are capable of you know and 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 to prove that they can play for the country uh, i think there are still spots up for grabs in the odi squad and the odi team and ryan is one of those players we've got a lot of talented players in this country that are currently playing I see someone asking me, Holly, please bring Ryan in the show. I brought Ryan on the show three times already. So go ahead and watch the interviews with him. I brought him on the show quite a bit. I gave you guys opportunities. And sometimes nobody came to the show when, <laughs> when we had him live on the show. So, yeah, we will do more of those in the future. Don't worry about that, guys. Um, keep subscribing. Keep sharing our content so that we can do shows like that. Because it needs to be worth the guests. Wow. Aditya, your thought on Ryan Nicholson? Standing must play for the Proteus ASAP period. <laughs> yeah, excellent insight. Short, short and sweet. Guys, I don't see any questions in the live chat left. Um, ultimately, you guys were just making comments on what we were saying. <clears throat> Get involved in the live chat is, is important as well. Um, and yeah we will answer your question so you know that to do that but guys thanks a lot for tuning in i hope you guys enjoyed this episode don't forget to smash the like button comment share subscribe also subscribe to cricket fanatics magazine monthly the link is in the description for that as well thanks a lot for watching guys i hope you guys enjoy your weekend um please do relax and take a break and and really put your feet up and and enjoy your weekend as much as you can thanks a lot for watching we'll see you guys very very soon we'll see you guys sunday evening we will do we will do a podcast show and hopefully we will have a full panel for that. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys on Sunday.
Cheers.